Hi everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel. Today, we'll be diving into the world of vector network analyzers or VNAs. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to set up, calibrate and use a VNA, whether you're new to VNAs or need a refresher. This video will give you a solid understanding of how to perform accurate measurements using a VNA. By the end of this video, you'll be ready to handle VNA calibration and measurement on your own, so let's get started. So, what exactly is a vector network analyzer? A VNA is an essential tool used in RF and microwave engineering. It measures how electrical networks like antennas, cables, or filters perform over a range of frequencies. Essentially, it helps us understand how a signal is transmitted or reflected when it passes through a component. Here you can see some different types of VNAs. There are some key concepts about a VNA that we should know. First, as parameters. The most important parameters it measures are called S parameters or scattering parameters like S11, S21, S12, and S22. These are crucial for evaluating the performance of RF components. 2. Phase and Magnitude VNAs provide both magnitude and phase information, which is crucial for analyzing the behavior of network in detail. This data helps in understanding not just how much power is reflected or transmitted, but also the timing of these signals. Venus are used in various applications such as designing and testing RF components, analyzing antennas, characterizing materials, developing communication systems. Now, let's take a closer look at the VNA we're using for this tutorial, the Keysight Model and 995 OB Field Fox, which operates up to 30 to gigahertz. This portable VNA is an incredibly versatile tool designed for both lab and field measurements. Let's go over some key features of this specific model and why it's an excellent choice for high-frequency RF and microwave testing. The 30 to gigahertz frequency range of this VNA makes it suitable for applications involving microwave frequencies and millimeter wave technologies. One of the standout features of the Keysight A9950B is its lightweight, rugged, and portable design. Unlike traditional lab VNAs, this model is ideal for field work, allowing you to perform accurate measurements on site, whether you're working on base stations, antennas, or microwave devices. This VNA can support both two-port and four-port configurations, which gives you the flexibility to measure S parameters like S11, S21, S12, and S22. For today's demonstration, we'll use the two-port setup. This model of VNA provides high-precision measurements with excellent dynamic range and low trace noise, ensuring the results we get during calibration and testing are highly accurate essential for validating designs. Moreover, this VNA also supports various calibration methods, including short open load through and electronic calibration, which we'll go over in detail during the calibration portion of this video. This versatility ensures we get optimal accuracy across a wide range of frequencies. Another amazing feature of this VNA, beyond VNA functionality, is that it can also function as a spectrum analyzer and a signal generator, which provides additional testing capabilities in a single device. Before we begin any measurements, it's crucial to calibrate the VNA to ensure accuracy. Calibration helps eliminate errors like cable loss or mismatches, which could otherwise affect our results. This is the VNA model on 9950B, capable of measurements up to 30 to gigahertz. As you can see, the device has two ports, port 1 and port 2. Now, as I handle the VNA and its components, you'll notice that I'm wearing an anti-static wrist strap. This is connected to a grounded surface to prevent the buildup of static electricity. Before starting, make sure your connections are secure to avoid introducing errors during calibration. I've already checked the connectors and cables to ensure they're properly tightened. Now, let's power on the VNA. Press the power button to turn it on.
This VNA has several buttons to control its setup. As I mentioned earlier, this model can function both as a vector network analyzer and a spectrum analyzer. By pressing the mode button, we can select different operational modes. For this tutorial, we'll be using the network analyzer mode. On the screen, you'll see the S parameters. Now, I'll select the frequency range for our measurement. Press the Frequency button to define the range. Here, you can set the start, stop, and center frequency points. I'll enter 20 GHz as the start frequency, and the stop frequency is already set to 30 to GHz. To begin calibration, press the Cal button. Then select Mechanical Cal to enter the calibration process. Then select Mechanical Cal to enter the calibration process. In the menu that appears, we'll need to set up the device for calibration. First, choose the calibration type. There are different calibration types for various applications. Since we're measuring S11, S21, and S22, We'll go with the full support SOLR unknown through calibration. Next, select the type of connectors for the device under test dot. In this case, we'll choose to 0.9 to millimeters connectors for both port 1 and port 2. Now, let's set up the mechanical calibration. We're using a calibration kit that covers the frequency range from DC to 40 GHz. Here's the kit it includes standards like a short, open, load, and through. Here, we'll select the appropriate calibration kit cal kit for both port 1 and port 2. Now we can start the calibration by pressing the start calibration button. Follow the on-screen instructions for the calibration process. The first step is to connect the open standard from the calibration kit to port 1 of the VNA. Make sure the connection is secure, then press the measure button. Next, connect the short standard to port 1. Once it's connected, press Measure. After that, connect the load standard to port 1 and press Measure again. Now, repeat the process for port 2, connect the open, short, and load standards to port 2 in sequence, pressing measure each time.
The final step is to connect the through standard to both ports of the VNA. Once it's connected, press measure. After completing these steps, the VNA is calibrated and ready for accurate measurements. Now that the VNA is calibrated, we can start measuring the performance of an RF component. For this demonstration, I'll measure S parameters of a beamforming antenna system. This antenna system includes eight distinct connectors to 0.9 to millimeters. In this antenna system, six input ports are connected to 50 ohms match loads. I'm gonna to measure the S parameters between these to free ports. First, connect these two ports of device to the VNA ports. Once it's connected, we'll start looking at the key measurements return losses, which show how much signal is reflected back, and insertion losses, which show how much signal passes through the device. On the VNA screen, you can see the S parameters displayed as traces. By pressing the S to 2 button, you can view the return loss for port 2. By pressing Format button, we can also modify the setup to display the S parameters in different formats, such as dB or linear units, depending on our measurement needs. Additionally, this VNA can be set up to display the VSWR voltage standing wave ratio for each port, as you can see here. The VSWR is an important parameter that helps us assess the efficiency of power transfer between the VNA and the device under test, indicating how well the impedance is matched. Furthermore, the VNA can be configured to show the phase behavior of each port. That wraps up our tutorial on using a vector network in LISER. Today, we covered what a VNA is, its applications, the importance of calibration, and how to take basic measurements. I hope this video helped you better understand the process of using a VNA for RF measurements. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful.